Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Nelson, you're watching HNL. And if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like because it really helps this channel grow. And if you guys have been following me for a while, you have definitely seen the growth. And I owe it all to you because you guys have been great, great viewers and I never get tired of thanking you. It's never enough. Today, I wanna bring you guys a mini haul from the previous video that I put out, which was over at Fairchild Botanical Tropical Gardens or Tropical Botanical Gardens. It's so, I always flip those around. But <laughs> but they had a wonderful fair called, I believe was Orchids in October. And they usually have two orchid fairs. They have the, the Orchids in Bloom, and I think this one's Orchids in October, which is a little smaller. And it was really nice. It was small, but it had a lot. It was packed with so many orchids colors everywhere it was absolutely beautiful i had a great time and of course with my partner in crime terry we we it's it's just a, a comedy show with us and even off camera it's still like that <laughs> it's not any different <laughs> which makes it a lot of fun and i'm glad you guys have left a lot of comments you have kind of taken the journey with us and you get excited with the fun that we have because before i thought maybe it's only fun to, funny to us but no it seems to be funny to you guys too so <laughs> that's awesome so another thing i wanted to share with you guys besides the hall i think i'm going to show you a couple of things that i have blooming like that back there which is outrageous it's from crow smith and it's really really pretty uh, i have some new blooms and it's cooled down a lot notice i'm not dripping in sweat usually I have drops or any or, or things showing that I'm sweating it is nice and cool it is quiet as you can hear all you hear is the cricket not even birds everybody's like just relaxed <laughs> so anyway without further ado let's go look at that hall and a couple of blooms all right my friends we're gonna start in here because this is where I put my I, I sprayed them already with pesticide um and i put them all here these are the ones that i have i just these are the ones that i just brought home from fairchild now these don't have names i think only one of them has name but they're dendrobiums and they're just hybrids you know that are created I'm sorry it's not as bright in here as it is out there so the focal gets a little bit weird even though the sun is out you can already see a difference in lighting when the fall comes in but look at that, how beautiful. This syndrobium stole my heart. This was at Udeli's. When she told me, go take a nice whiff out of those flowers. And when I did, they had a beautiful fragrance and they normally don't. You hardly ever, unless it's an anasmum or a nobly or, you know, these really never have fragrance, not that I know of. And so I was like, how much is it? And so they, they sell them for 25, but they left it to me for 20. And what a great deal. What a great deal this was. I really, really loved it. And, I, and I'm really loving, again, these tones, these pink tones. Before I got kind of tired of them, but I started learning, you know, to see the beauty in it. And it's, it's beautiful. You know, it's a beautiful, beautiful color. They're just so regal. And I put them in these pots as soon as I got home because unbeknownst to me, a good friend of mine donated these pots to me. Isn't this great? <laughs> I have to wash them, but they're all old pots, retired pots that he has. He says, I have so many. I'll just, every time I visit, you all bring some. So he brought me these. He brought me, most of my pots come from him. Most of my pots, all those came from him, which I love these for dendrobiums for the small cups are great. But he brought me all those and now I can start, you know, repotting certain things that have outgrown like my bone films now you guys know i was going to take this because i was flabbergasted with this flower it's just so big hold on here let me show you a better one that way it's not as look at that flower it's a beauty and what i liked is because they're so they're so big it kind of gives me that cat Leah. You know, not that it looks like a cattleya, it just gives me that feel almost of a cattleya on a cane, which makes it even even more interesting. And this one didn't have a tag, unfortunately, and it was a gift from my friend Vicky, from Vicky's uh, Orchids. 
she had a lot of these. And I kept on seeing them. <laughs> I was so overwhelmed. You can tell when I'm overwhelmed with so much orchids because I start forgetting what I previously saw. And I, when I edit it, I'm like, you just saw that flower in the entrance. How could you have forgotten it? Because there was just so much beauty everywhere. I was like, I didn't know if I saw it or not. I was, I was just going towards them, you know, like trying to capture as many for you guys as possible. <laughs> But it was beautiful. And when she gave me this, I was so happy. I'm like, Vicky, that is such a... I go, you don't, you have no idea how much I love that orchid. Then this one, I finally get to own. I finally get to own this one. This one, my friend Mercedes, which if you guys have not seen that video of the home visit, I truly encourage you. There's three parts to her home visits already. There, I've, I've gone three times. And I gotta tell you, her stuff is outrageous. And she had this dendrobium. Now, this is not a rare or anything like that. It's just, it's just beautiful. And honestly, to tell you the truth, rarity is good, but you know what? Sometimes rare ones aren't even pretty, you know, like, like these hybrids. So for me, it's about me enjoying the beauty of that flower when it blooms. And plus, if you look at Mercedes, she has specimens. She buys them like this for like 10, 15, 20, 25 bucks. She says she doesn't spend much on orchids. And she grows them to massive specimens, and so it looks already amazing. It looks like a very expensive orchid, which it is if you grow it to that size. But anyways, I now own, and that's it's a pretty big size too. And that also was gifted to me by Vicky. She gave me these two. Very sweet. Now, the story about this wonderful <laughs> orchid. Oh, wait a minute, look, look. Look what I just found. That is the name of this one. I didn't even see this tag. It was so dug in there. Popeye. And I should have remembered because um, Mercedes does have it tagged. And uh, it said Popeye. So you know what? That makes it even more worth it because it's registered. So even though it's not a rare one, it's a registered dendrobium. Because a lot of dendrobiums and... Uh, and Philanopsis are hybridized but not registered. So they don't really have a name. So anyways, this beautiful orchid here that I've yet to remember how to say the name, something brown, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'll put it underneath or I'll put a little tag next to the image. This one, again, I, I call it orchid amnesia. <laughs> it's like you totally forget that you own it. I have the same exact one given to me by another home visit I did from Maria. Another great one. If you haven't seen, she's an incredible collector. You've got to see the stuff she has. It's really amazing. And she has a bunch of these and she gifted me one. And I fell in love. This has to be one of the most beautiful dendrobium orchid flowers that I saw this weekend everywhere in the fair. Everyone was carrying these and they were so popular. So many people were buying these because it's just, first of all, this is a flower that will last forever. You forget when it started blooming. That's how long, long ago my other one, my other one is still blooming by the way. And if you go see Maria's home visit, that's when she gave it to me. It was already in bloom. So calculate from that time till now, it's been already a couple of weeks and it's still blooming beautifully. So anyway, I now own these two. This one is actually pretty big. And I had bumped into my friend Melissa from Melissa Loves Orchids. And she wanted to give me something and she bought me one. She has it at her house. She bought me one of these. <laughs> and she goes, I saw it because it has the colors you like. And I and I it had your name all over it. And I'm like, well, it has my name all over it now three times. <laughs> because I have three witches. Excellent. Excellent. Because I I wanted to get a bunch of these and put them all together. So and now I have three and they were all gifts. So it's very, very, very special. It'll be a very special piece to put together. So this is what I, this is my mini haul in orchids. And I'll come back to this beauty here that, oh, you know what? Let's just, we don't have to be so, my God. Like I, I was already, I have to show you the other piece, uh, other uh, thing that I brought the haul, but we don't have to be like so strict. I could just show you right here. This I bought from Jim and I. It just started blooming. This is the second or third time it blooms for me in a very short period. I bought this not too long ago. 
It's a beautiful flower and what's special about it is that as it ages, the petals turn like um, like a key lime green. So that green with that pink becomes absolutely stunning. It's like the Rene Marquis, but in a Vanda. And so here, let me show you. That is the name. Oh no! Vanda J. Mullen, I think it's it's how you say it. And it's and it's very fragrant, by the way. Really, really pretty. I bought this from them, and I think it was Flamingo Park. And what caught my eye was uh, the green and pink. So when it rebloomed for me, and it opened, I saw these colors, and I'm like, where the, where did I get this? I was like going crazy i'm like i don't remember getting this i remember getting this at jim and i because i kept on looking at, at the tag and i go i remember talking about that it's a moats uh cross and later on it turned green i go oh it's one of those um transitional coloring or color petals now i think i showed you guys this yes i did it's in my last what's in bloom i'm not going to repeat it because then it's it's just redundant and i know that sometimes you know when i get newbies you guys haven't seen like i've shown this many times which is my goblin and i have to remind myself that there are new people watching you know all the time and, and i need to consider them as well so that way they don't have to start looking for that specific flower that i just passed so for you guys that already saw this, just bear with us. This is for the newbies. <laughs> but it is a beautiful flower. It's called a goblin, a green goblin. This is also from Gemini. And it's a Moats cross. Gemini um, sells a lot of Moats uh, orchids, which is great because if the Moats can't be at a show and you want to get Moats flowers or Mo Moats orchids, you can get them at Gemini. That's a good place to start. Beautiful. And it's fragrant too. Now, I don't have anything in there that I can show you. So let's go to the other thing that I got that I think if you guys whoop, focus. By the way, my Trico Centrum is looking amazing. This one is starting to drop some of the flowers if I can focus. Why is it not focusing today? See, it has days that it's really good and days that it's really bad. I, I don't know. I really do think that the iPhone is alive. It has emotions. So this has lost some flowers, but it's got the new spike. Putting more buds. This is an, oh, this is a new spike. Yeah, this is a brand new spike. I'm sorry. I was like, well, it's lost some flowers, but it still looks good. Now, this is a new spike. The one that lost all the flowers is that one. And I showed that already in my last What's in Bloom. But look how pretty that is. It's a pretty, pretty flower. And this, this is a, a pretty old um, trichocentrum. As you guys can see, it's very big. I put it on a mount and it took off. So there she is, Miss America. I did get this. You guys saw me buying it. This is what they call the Mickey Mouse that I kept on calling the Stingray. But I guess the Stingray is all green. And it's such a cool uh, leaf. It's very gnarly. It creates all these like weird patterns that's very normal on this plant. Hold on. I'm going to be tapping on my screen all, all day. It does these gnarly... Um, shapes on the leaves but it's a beautiful beautiful plant and i'm giving it i think this one's gonna do good because when i had my other one i didn't have the screen house i didn't you know this was many years ago um it was right during the pandemic and i always say many years ago the pandemic was what four or five years ago it was literally like right right before the pandemic 2019 maybe is when i got it and it just didn't do good and before that, I had gotten another one and it died on me. So I decided to give this a try. This is from Nature's Tapestry. My friends over that are always at Ophi's uh, orchid fairs and plant fairs. And believe it or not, here's the tag. This beauty cost me only $20. It was $25, but he gave me a break on the, pr on the price. Told me, just give me, hold on. 
see I'm, I'm serious something's up today with the, <laughs> with the iPhone because there's other times that it doesn't do that that's the name so I am so happy that I got this back because I've been wanting to put it back but I I've held and if you look at some of my videos when I go to nature's tapestry and other nurseries I always kind of stop by these and contemplate but this time was the time that I did it <laughs> so let's see here oh I, I've shown you guys all these all these are in bloom if you guys want to see them um this one has opened a little bit more from the last time but if you want to see more of them you can definitely go to my what's in bloom that I put out about a week ago or a week and a half ago and I talk about all these beauty I knew it! I knew it! You're gonna give me. These are the. Um, well, I always forget the name of these. I had them inside my quick tent. See, those are the babies, the buds, and it was not blooming. And I remember that they bloom around October because I call it the Halloween um, orchid. Victoria something is it? No. Why can I not remember the name of this? I know this name. Anyways, I'll put it down. Um, I keep thinking Doris Dukes, but it has nothing to do with that. These are the ones that look like long, long claws. It's a very cool bubble film. Oh, and then these beauties I showed before, also in my What's in Bloom. Very pretty. It's a, I believe these are Ascascendas. I keep, I call them Macaros. I call them all Macaros, they're not. Some are Ascascendas, some are Arandas. Oh, I don't like old brown flowers on the leaves because they bring bugs. So guys, it's gotten very cool out. As you can see, you can kind of see through the film that it looks crispy. Everything looks kind of crispy and very bright. You know, the colors are very saturated. It's just because this cool weather and these super, super clear blue skies bring on a whole other feel to the greenhouse. And what I love is that the plants look amazing. They start looking really, really good. Now, I showed you guys this before. This was from my friend Kelly in Hawaii. She shipped this to me from, um, I think, I don't know if she bought this at S&W &S from Jeremy. I know Jeremy shipped it over here for her. But um, look how beautiful. It's giving me three flowers. This one's gonna open today. It's already on its way to opening. It's going to be really, really pretty. It's a gorgeous Catlia. It's called the Xing Xiang Diamond. Hold on. Xing Xiang Diamond Tai Young Number One. Tai Young Number One. <laughs> but the colors on this, she says, when I saw it, I was like, Nelson's going to like this cranberry and yellow even though this one is more of um it's almost cranberry it's more of a violety cranberry but nonetheless absolutely stunningly beautiful it's a gorgeous flower and then right next to it now if you guys look back i would say maybe five months four months ago at Ophi's try not to get the shadow in the way because I'm literally in front of the sun I got this beautiful Catlia at the Kroll Smith um, booth but Hayden um, had was showing me the orchid and I thought it was such a cool shot that I made that the thumbnail so if you guys want to see where I bought it and how I got how big it was check it out you'll see a guy wearing uh, orange hats and he's kind of showing this flower just like this. But it was one flower and it was the size of these two flowers. I kid you not. It was massive. But this time I bloomed it for the very first time myself since I gotten it. It gave me two gorgeous, healthy flowers. I have to send a picture. Oh, hold on. You know what I'm going to do? I'm fighting the, the sun instead of working with it. Ah. There we go. No, that's worse. <laughs> Here we go. Maybe that'll work a little better. Yeah, even though that chair is not very attractive. 
it's just in a bad spot right now the sun is it's 10 o'clock in the morning so anyways um it was a very big flower it was about the size of that flower and that's what was mesmerizing but honestly i kind of like that it has two flowers even though it's half the size of the other flower each one i don't mind because they're still big i mean they're still pretty big but to have two of them is just absolutely amazing so i gotta definitely i would do an art piece with just this right here i would take a picture boom right there and do an art piece <laughs> Oh, the old days coming back. I'm reminiscing. <laughs> but yeah, that's a gorgeous, gorgeous um, cat. And that's the name right there. It's, I believe it's one of their new ones. Calm Thong Fancy. And I got to thank Julian for this because he's the one that sent me a message with a picture saying, I think this is a, co this is a color that you like. <laughs> And I'm like, I think you're right. <laughs> it's just really pretty. I don't get tired of seeing it. Look at that. I mean, that right there is an art piece. Imagine that over a sofa in, in a watercolor or an abstract. Absolutely gorgeous. All right. Oh, and by the way, here is the one that Maria gave me. The one that I've never seen a dendrobium like this before, except in my own, in my own backyard. <laughs> so this is the one she gave me. It's the blooms still look great. It's been blooming for, I would say, about three weeks, maybe now. So I'm going to put this one since she's a smaller one together with the other one and have her um, have um, Melissa give me the other one for the for the project. I think it's going to look great. And I think Melissa told me that. <laughs> <laughs> that she, she dropped it or something like that and the spike broke she goes i have to go get you another one she's so funny <laughs> she's, oh my god melissa very sweet of you to think of me though it doesn't matter with or without spike look at these little fowls i love these these are noids so i don't have any ids noids are no id and then in the orchid uh, platform, people usually say noids um, as a short way of saying no identification. So when you hear me say noid, that's what I'm talking about. Now, and I think I bought this also at Flamingo Park. Yes, I did. I bought this with Terry at Flamingo Park. Now back here, it's a carnival of all I wanted to show you guys this one, but it was the cutest thing and I didn't videotape it. I thought it was going to last a little longer. Oh man, they look like, I've shown it before, they look like uh, Swiss clogs, you know, like those wooden clogs. But my, um, say, say Waldorf, <laughs> my Wilbur Chang is in bloom and this is one that I really love to show. This is a, a beautiful beautiful flower it's pretty big this is actually small um they come out sometimes even bigger it's it's starting this is a new spike so from this spike it'll just continue it's a sequential spike so it'll just continue blooming this will drop it'll it last about i would say under a week maybe or more a little bit more probably and now with this cool weather it'll probably last a little longer and so they keep opening you know from the end of the see this is another one processing there focus no it's not gonna do it she is not having it today this iphone is in a bad attitude today <laughs> she's like i don't want to focus at anything i'm tired <laughs> i swear to god it feels that way now down here oh do i have the name here yeah and i think i i think i noticed a typo on here yeah i forgot to put an l hold on it's wilbur chang with an L, W-I-L. I noticed that the other day. I'm like, ooh, typo. <laughs> I did not see that. Now, this one has been giving me a lot of blooms lately. This is the one that I call the spaceship because when you look at it from this angle, it looks like that ride in Las Vegas where people sit and it, the arm goes out the building from the stratosphere and it starts spinning with these little 
C-shaped carts that you're sitting in and you're, imagine sitting on each one of these, this thing spinning and you're hundreds of feet up in the air <laughs> on top of the, the tallest building in Vegas, which is crazy. Well, that's what this reminds me of, but it's such a gorgeous, gorgeous um, bulb of film. It's like um, each little each little one is a flower. So that's not the whole flower. Each one is a flower. See? And I always say that Paphiopetalums and Bulbophyllums are like the BC orchids. Like they look very prehistoric and they're very strange. And they're extremely diverse. I mean, look at the difference from this to this, you know, it's like two completely different things. And yet they're just so sophisticated and so completely different from the rest of the flower world. I'm just mesmerized. This is a Macchianum. Here, let me, I have to be careful because this Bulbophyllum is one of the most delicate ones. Bulbophyllum Macoyanum. It is a very, very gentle flower, so you have to be extremely careful. Oh no! I can't believe I just did that. Oh no! And I heard it too. This is one of my favorite bubble films, and I was just telling Julian, guess what I got to bloom for the very first time? And this is like an award-winning, not award-winning, but it, it it's, I wanted to put it to, to get an award. This was a red tag orchid from Kroll Smith. Here it is, it's extreme. This is pretty rare. You can't find this hardly anywhere. This it has an award of merit um, from the American Orchid Society. And I got that from them last year and I just destroyed the spike. Okay, this is uh, the drama part of the video. <laughs> Listen guys. Here it is. Is this it? No. I heard it. I want to see where it fell. Oh man. That is so sad. Well, you know what? It's happened before and actually it's encouraged the plant to push another spike. So I'm not going to dismiss it as a total tragedy. We'll, we'll deal with it later. <laughs> Anyways, this is my Jim Clarkson that I've shown you guys has been actually uh, blooming for quite a while. And last time I showed you, all these were in the back were little knots. Let me see, is there any more? Oh yeah, there's one more there. And there's another little one there. This one's been giving a lot. And this one smells, oh, I love it. It's, it smells just like gardenias. It has a gardenia fragrance. So this is one of those bulbal films that if you don't like bulbs because they are stinky, this one smells really, really, really good. And it's got a beautiful shape. You know, sometimes we forget to show the profile of an orchid and the profile sometimes is even more interesting than the front part. But yeah, this is a gorgeous uh, plant. It was one of my first ones that I got at Fairchild years ago and it's just such a healthy healthy and i don't know if you guys noticed have you seen the leaves i mean honestly that's that's exactly how they look there's no filter or anything there do you see how green and polished i added way more um palm olive soap into my sprayer uh when i sprayed it for fungicide and also i added um a lot of Epsom salt this time. I added calcium mag, which is cow mag, as magnesium, and I also added two scoops or two table, uh, two teaspoons of Epsom salt per gallon. So one teaspoon of cow mag and two teaspoons of Epsom salt when I feed it. And if I'm going to do fungicide, which I do it separately, I don't do that with my with my feedings. I do fungicide, orthine, and liquid soap, and look at the difference oh and i started adding green kelp so i now that i'm filming here i'm like wow they look really green like everything looks really green i mean there's still that calcium deposit because you know the water here is cal calcified but look at this baby i've shown her before but she is on a roll this bellina 
Look, she's got more here and one on its way. And guys, I gotta tell you the, the quality of Chia. Oh, let me take this tag out because it's hurting my <laughs> it's hurting my thumb. This is a Pibalina fire shape. And this is from Chang Huang Orchids. And I always see them at the Redland Show. The Moats Redland Show. And this time I bought two and I put them together facing apart. So that way they don't fight each other. And look how beautiful. And it smells so good. It's cardamom with like a limey flavor. And then this I promised you guys I was going to show you when it opened. It just started opening. This is the gorgeous Tempensis um, Tetrapsis. <laughs> the Tetrapsis Wilson. Look at that, how pretty it is. I was dying to get one of these. And look how many buds it has coming from the other one. So with this, I did the same thing. And see, it's cool to do that because that way it'll give you a lot more blooms when you add two and one. Now, some fowls I've noticed, they don't like it. So it's a luck of the draw. I've done it to these two and they seem to do very well, they're fine. Now, this one is a recovery story. This one, I experimented. It was the very first um, fowl outside of like the common fowl. These are, I call these prize winning fowls. It doesn't necessarily mean they're prize winners. I just call them prize winning fowls because they're the ones that, that really look like something way more exotic than the, the moth orchids. So these fowls, um, were the first ones that I bought and I was experimenting and this poor thing this is what they call the Tejas Giant Amboinensis from do I have a tag for this? I don't think I do I think I made one hold on no I don't have one but that's what it is it's an Amboinensis Tejas Giant from Kroll Smith and this flower smells amazing it's like immense fragrance and look at the patterns on that very leopard now this one the very first time I bought something from Carl Smith was that day, and this was one of them. And the person who sold, <laughs> it's so funny, many years ago, and the person who sold it to me was Julian. And who would have thought that today, you know, fast forward, we'd be friends and he'd be teaching me so much about orchids. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, I, this was one, the very first Philonopsis I got and I almost killed it. I didn't know how to take care of it. I didn't know where to put it. And then finally, you know, I, I still have reminiscences of it. Like, I think I had like one or two leaves left. And I said, you know, now that I know what I'm doing, I'm gonna take that Amboinensis and try her out. And I put her here, oh, let me see, in this pot. And I filled it with moss. It just has regular moss. Now I don't water it every day, guys, because especially now with the cold weather coming in, you don't want to water every day. You want to let it dry out. It's good to let up uh, the fowls dry out a little bit. And I noticed that in my um, in my salon, I let my fowls sometimes dry out, not because I want to, because I kind of forget. <laughs> and they're doing great. They're doing wonderful. So don't be afraid to let, you know, the, the moss. Like I just fed, I just watered these like I would say a day ago. Yeah, and it's already drying. So I would probably leave it like this today and then tomorrow water everything. Because you don't, oh look, I'm getting a spike here. That's nice. So um, don't be afraid to, um, oh, and you're opening too. This is a uh, one I got from Brethren's. It's a beautiful purple zygopetalum, but it's not open yet. Let me see if I can get you the name. Zygonesia Sinosher Bluebirds. And this one's actually doing good because I don't have a lot of luck. Ooh, I'm doing squats. <laughs> it feels like I'm doing squats. So anyways, that concludes what I have blooming right now. So there, I guess we turned it into a what's in bloom. And guys, all those birds you hear, I want you to know that no i don't have an aviary some people were asking me if i have aviaries i live very close to the everglades so migrating birds travel all over uh into the everglades 
and we get a lot of those birds in our yard so there's sometimes birds that i've never seen before like the other day i saw this bright bright orange bird tiny and i was like what a beautiful bird it was tiny i didn't know what it was but i figured it was probably migrating and they get lost sometimes they go <laughs> i've had them go on my terrace i have to kind of like guide them back out because they freak out i don't want them to have a heart attack i want to bring you back here because we're kind of like we're fixing the the sprayer lewis put that sprayer so it could get water here and i want to show you guys that i planted all these vanilla vines here and this was gifted to me by miss maria she gave me this i was gonna put it on a tree but you know what i've had several vanillas i put them on trees and they die so i figured let's try a different thing let's step outside the box i never see anybody putting it around a fence or putting it around wood and i gotta tell you this has already been here for several weeks and no when did maria give me this probably two weeks ago and she is doing great she is doing really really good the leaves are strong they're very green they get water every single day because they are planted on the pots you have to plant the stem the bottom part of the stem in dirt like that so that way it survives this one i put it straight in the ground see right there and this whole mountain here used to be our compost mountain so all that you see growing there which we're going to have to clean up is all growing on compost so i figured that that would be great for the vanilla and it seems to really 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 like it and then my beautiful hoyas that i keep here are doing wonderful they're none of them are blooming right now but i'll tell you they're looking better than ever look at the health on these leaves just looking really really shiny really nice this was given to me by mr c it's doing wonderful here so <clears throat> Let's see, what else? Do I have anything else to show you? I don't think so. I think that's it. All right. My patio needs... It, it, they just did the, the landscaping, you know, the cutting of the grass and everything. But in, day, in two, three days, it's already filling up with leaves. It's never, 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 ever perfectly clean. Now, I showed you guys this before, but I wanted to show you to see how many flowers it's given me. And I knew it was going to be that gorgeous when it bloomed because it had a lot of spikes everywhere. And like I said, unfortunately, you know, the leaves fall out. But when it blooms, nobody's looking at the leaves. <laughs> gorgeous. And there's one over here that's about to start. That one's about to start opening. So it's a really pretty dendrobium. All right, now back here, I have what they call the violetta. I forgot I had some back here too. <laughs> it's just that back here, I we have not cleaned because we're gonna start, why isn't this going back? My focal is not, there we go. See how this is filled? That has to be all cleaned out, but this is gonna be moved all the way to here so it's almost it's like double the size so i'm gonna get a lot a lot of space it's gonna help me so much to put the the ones that are growing <clears throat> under that paneling because we're gonna do roof paneling and clear that way we control the water that hits them now look at this this is my violetta this year she has been giving me this is the third time it blooms this year it went from no blooms to now constantly blooming. And I have one on, on a tree that is also blooming. So pretty. And yes, it's, it's just starting to open. They do last a long time. Oh, hi there, buddy. I guess he wants to uh, pollinate. Oh, mesmerizing. All right. She really liked These are Cher's dream. These are just starting to open as well. This is from Dave. 
also a great home visit video that I did. Amazing dendrobiums. And this was a gift he gave me that has Cher's Dream. It has a Schimberkia. Um, hold on. I made a tag for it. Yes, I did. Tibiana. Ah, all right. I'm doing a lot of squats and a lot of stretching today. <laughs> but I'm not sweating. I'm not out of breath. We're all good. Let's come back here and show you this beauty. By the way, these are all guava trees. And this is where Lewis does all his cropping back here. Now look at this gorgeous Violetta as well. This was gifted to me by Ben. One day we were all there filming and they were cutting a huge specimen back. And he gave me like six or seven uh, for me and, and Laz, Laz was with me. And Laz is like, well, I have no trees. I'll just take one, you keep the rest. <laughs> and so we put him here on some of our trees and look, now they're starting to bloom. It's a really pretty flower. Love it. And this is, I'll show you now how many roots have grown on this tree. This is a mango tree which I normally am not a fan. And these I do cut, I don't let them grow because you don't want bugs or pests. You always want to keep it green. So I'm going to have to trim under here because we want to keep this tree very small. So that way we can actually grab the fruits from below, but it's loving it here. It's a beautiful, beautiful spot for it. And it's taken off. There were tiny pieces and it's taken off. This, by the way, I've had this for so long. For many, many years. I would say four years. And it just doesn't, poor thing. It's just now starting to show, like right here. This is, this is incredible progress right here. All this is new. So I didn't give up on her. She was so yellow and I said, I'm not going to give up on you. I can't. You look like you want to live. And so I put her here in between this this uh, thing it wouldn't attach to any um tree now i believe this is a cymbidium of some sort it was a gift but um they didn't know what it was from the looks of it i think it's a cymbidium so i put it there and guys all that green is new and it's dropping all the old leaves that it was they were yellow they weren't dead but they were just the whole plant was yellow and I put it here and unbeknownst to me, I was walking back here the other day because I kind of forget to come back here sometimes. And I looked at this and I said, is it my imagination or this thing is actually growing back? And I said, my God, it looks so healthy now. <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? I'm glad I didn't give up on you. I kept on and kept on to the point where she's coming back. So see, we have a, a sad story with our spike, but we have a beautiful victory story with this plant. And this poor leaf has been trying to survive, but it got so, I guess this happens sometimes when it gets too much uh, water drippage, it's probably like dripping water will cause this. It'll it'll rot that part of the leaf and then it won't come back. So that, that happens, you know, when you have them outdoors. Like, let me see, yeah, these don't have it. All these are moats. All these vandas that I put on my trees are usually moats. They do very well on trees. All right, guys, so let me turn this around. All right, guys, that is it. That is the end of today's episode. I am going to enjoy the rest of my day because it's just way too beautiful. I took the day off to do a couple of things here. It's kind of slow at work today, so I figured, you know what? When it's slow over there, let me be productive at home, and I could also put in some videos in for you guys to keep them you know, rolling. That way I don't wait so long in between. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you guys, uh, I was approached, or actually they sent me a, a beautiful invitation from the Mounts Botanical Gardens that you guys have seen me uh, do some videos tape, uh, videotapes there before, or segments there. And they enjoyed the, the episodes very much, and they invited me uh, for a private tour and also to do a talk. Now, I've never done a talk for um, any parks or anything in the, in the realm of 
of botanicals. I've done many talks in art and in and, and the field that I was in for many years, but this is going to be a first for me. So I would love to do it. I mean, I'm used to doing talks in front of uh, big audiences. Um, it's just the topic. I wouldn't know what would be a good topic to bring to you guys that you would be interested in. Now, I would love to also know how many of you would go. It's in West Palm Beach, and I would love, 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 love to see some of you guys there to meet you in person. It would be wonderful if that would happen. But right now, it's just a thought. Uh, I did tell uh, the marketing director, uh, Christina, hi, if you're watching, <laughs> um, if she uh, can wait until February because I'm going to go in November to Curl Smith, and that's when they're going to have the plant palooza so if you guys are somewhere in west palm beach or in the vicinities uh november four and five i think it is <laughs> or four and yeah i think it's four and five uh plant palooza at the mounts garden mounts botanical garden and if you're in the popka area i will be at cruel smith which they're going to have their grand opening of the showroom and I can't wait to see it. Now, uh, Julie and I, we've been talking about doing a full episode on it, so I may do it afterwards. So that way um, they can do their grand opening the day of their event. And then afterwards I can film the whole place in, in a private tour and bring it to you guys. But it's gonna be absolutely beautiful. I've seen some photos and it looks really, really, really pretty. So anyways, guys, as I always do in the very end, I will leave all the little posters and memes for the shows that are up and coming in, the, in Florida. Not all of them, but as many as I can uh, place there without making this too, too long. And that is it. I think we're done. The sun just feels so good. It really isn't bothering me. It's right there on my face, but it feels great. <laughs> all right, that's it. I'm trying to think. I, I don't want to forget. I know there's always something that I need to mention and I forget and then I get upset in my editing and then I'm adding things but I think that was it the whole thing of the botanical gardens I just want to hear your thoughts what you guys think and by the way I have way more comments than I've ever had before God bless you all thank you thank you so much but I may not be able to get to all of them anytime soon <laughs> I do go in there every now and then when I have a little space in time and I respond to what I see but it's very random it doesn't mean that if you left one today i'm going to get to it today i may get to it next week or if you left one next week uh today i make i never you know what i'm saying <laughs> i'm confusing myself but anyways that's how confusing it is when i'm trying to respond to everybody but i love it because i love reading your comments you know i i think that's what helps me adjust my channel and know exactly what you guys want what makes you guys laugh what makes you guys uh learn like i've been getting a lot of you viewers telling me how great your orchids are doing due to my regimen so that validates that what i'm doing is working in other areas not just mine because like i always said i'm not an orchid expert in the sense that i studied this i learned it in my backyard i've just been doing it for a long time and i've also been uh growing plants since i was like eight nine years old so you know there there is a knowledge there overall knowledge but as far as being an expert i could only tell you what works for me so in hopes that some some of it or if not all of it works for you so anyways guys thank you a uh, big thank you to farida farida um i'm sure you're watching this i think they found the package it was lost in the mail room <laughs> they lose back thank god it wasn't anything perishable but they found it thank you farida for the for the fertilizer for the fungicide i mean it's, it comes in granules i will talk about that as soon as i get it but until then i am nelson you have been watching nature now and remember to always always keep it green i'll see you next time <laughs>